Oh, sorry. Wait, I'm going the wrong direction. Nope, I'm going the wrong direction. I've had major technical difficulties this morning. Ah, I hate that. Okay. Oh, sorry. Wait, I'm going the wrong direction. Nope, I'm going the wrong direction. I've had major technical difficulties this morning. Ah, I hate that. hear me if you can't hear me I'm gonna cry hang on one second let me fix one thing all right gosh it's been a crazy morning and then when things don't work right um makes me insane so uh one other and it doesn't help that i changed my um camera like rig thing so everything's a little a little odd but i think we're good you're probably going to get a lot of the top of my head so <sighs> how are you all Can you guys hear me? I hope you can hear me. Leave a comment if you can hear me. Let me see if I can bring the comments up. Okay, good. Okay. Ah, okay, good, 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 good. Let me put on my glasses so that I can read the comments as they come up. So, because I can't see without them. How has your weekend been? Mine has been pretty good, actually, pretty good. Uh, my daughter came down from Bellingham and uh, our youngest daughter left and went to, um, to Amsterdam yesterday. And I was green with envy, you know? She's got the travel bug and she, you know, plans it and pulls the trigger and goes and I'm always like, oh, I've got too much to do. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. So anyway, but uh, so I've got some things to share with you today. And to be honest, I was kind of getting them put together um, this morning. Well, some of it this morning. I thought that I could be faster than I was, but um, anyway, we will uh, we will work on the fly because that's what we do. So what time is it in your neck of the woods? It's uh, 11 here. This is my coffee. You're in the, hi, Diana. You, you got better weather. It's kind of sunny here today too. Yesterday it was, it was dreary and gray. But uh, today it's today it's a little nicer, so that which is good. And so today I'm gonna show you some like mixed media stuff using some of our um, our March kit stuff. It's twelve in Mexico. You have warm weather. 11, 117. Hi, Shanners. All over the world. That's so cool. I love that I can like connect with people everywhere. So that's super fun. Um, we just finished shipping all of the um, March kits. So if, if you should have received your shipping notification, um, you know, you never look at yourself while you speak. So, um, first of all, hi, Sarah. Oh my gosh, it's been forever since I've chatted with you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Seven o'clock in the evening. Are your kids in bed? Actually, Diana, I think your kids are older like mine are. Well, maybe not as old as mine. But, um... 
yeah, yesterday I went to Ikea with, uh, with my daughters and, um, I had, uh, <laughs> I had knee surgery about a month ago and, um, I'm still recovering from it. I have to be kind of careful with walking long distances and stuff. And so yesterday we went to Ikea, they're 17 and 19, so still teenagers. I kind of miss it when my kids were a little bit younger. Um, now they're like, mom. So, yeah, I, I apparently have no boundaries and I get in their business too much. So I always want to be in the know. You know, they turn into adults. Hi, Rose. Thanks for joining. It's good to see you. Oh my God, I had a nightmare last night. So I had a nightmare that I had my live in the morning and I got up and my husband looked at me. He's like, did you know that your front tooth broke? And I'm like, what? And all of a sudden I put my hand up to my mouth and I'm like, oh my God, like half of one of my front teeth broke. And I'm like, I have to, I have to be do a live today. How am I going to do that? Must have had some anxiety about this. I'm not very good on camera, so um, I totally apologize for all of my uhs and ums and, you know, things. Yeah, so I have a little camera fright. And I'm hoping over time it's going to get a little better, but I always feel like I'm so awkward. Which is probably the case for everybody. Like when I look at my camera, I have no idea where to look. Like, do I talk to myself? Do I look over here? I don't know. So, um, yeah. So, um, March kits have shipped. And I'm super excited about that. And they're, they're so cool. They're so, so cool. Like, there's so many things in them. I, I did an unboxing in our Facebook group on Wednesday, I believe. So if you aren't a member of our Facebook group, um, just head over and join. It's super fun. There's lots of activities. People share projects and ideas and our design team is over there. They're sharing their projects that they create with our kits. And um, we have two challenges every single month, a mood board challenge and a sketch challenge. And um, all you have to do, you can, everybody's welcome to join. You don't have to use HipKit products in your projects. You just um, use the prompt that is um, in our Facebook group. You'll, you, there's, there's a thread there. Um, create your layout based upon the guidelines in the prompts and upload and share your project in that thread during um, the month. I believe that the deadline is March 31st at like 6 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, Pacific Standard Time. Anyway, all the details are there. Uh, and at the end of the month, we choose a winner for each one of our challenges and they receive a $25 gift certificate to our shop. So you can, um, try our kits. If you're not a subscriber, um, you can order, they're great for ordering add-ons to try something new. You know, if you just get our main kit every month, good grief, oh, choking myself. My Sunday uh, uniform is usually a hoodie and sweats, so, um, yeah, or a sweatshirt of some sort, because generally on Sundays, I don't leave the house. Um, so anyway, join our Facebook group and uh, jump in in our challenges. Jump in, introduce yourself. It's a great way to connect with other people. It's a great way to connect with our designers. You know, we love to see what everybody is creating and um, regardless of whether it's with our kits or not, um, we just like to, to get to know everybody and um, welcome everybody. So we'd love for you to join if you're not already a subscriber. And we're going to have some really super fun stuff coming up 
um, for National Scrapbooking Day or weekend, International Scrapbooking Day, coming up the first week of May. So um, if you aren't already a subscriber, you want to um, be a subscriber. So you are, if you aren't already a member of our Facebook group, you're going to want to be sure to join so that you um, get notified of all of um, the details for our event. So we're going to do some really cool things. Hi, Yessie. Thanks for joining us. Where are you from? Yeah, so the other thing, um, we, uh, other thing, um, we share new projects and reels on our Instagram every single um, day. So not reels every day, but we, Oh, warm weather. Yay. We're in Washington, so we're cool and rainy really through June. And then all of a sudden, summer hits. It's beautiful, and we uh, really appreciate it. So, um, so be sure to follow us on Instagram. You know, we've got fresh inspiration. If you're looking for something quick, we've got reels that, po that we share several times a week. Um, you know, and they're under two minutes. So you can watch something, get some inspiration for your next project. Um, you know, you can see what our design team is up to, what our kits look like, the things that you can create with our kits. It's a great way to um, find quick inspiration. And then if you're looking for something a little more detailed, uh, make sure you uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We post new process videos daily and um, it's a great way to learn new techniques or find a new way to use a product that you use over and over the same way you know it's it's a great way to to try something new and you're we welcome and encourage you guys to scrap lift our stuff if you love it you know regardless of how you create we just want you to create so Without further ado, shall we play with some mixed media stuff? Um, let's see, what was I going to start with? A couple of, well, I think maybe I'll just turn the camera around so that um, we can kind of get started and I can show you this stuff like on my desk. It'll be easier, you'll see it better. So one second. Let me think. I'll have to take, I'll, I'll take a picture of my new camera set up and I'll post it on our Facebook group so you can all see what's, what's happening around here. So, um, okay, so now I am upside down. Let's see if this is going to, ah. Oh, crap. Okay, you guys, you're gonna, don't get dizzy. <sighs> Sorry, my camera came off the stupid thing. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Close your eyes, close your eyes. <sighs> okay, hang on. I'm putting you on my desk for a second. You're gonna look at the ceiling while I fix this. Ugh. Technical difficulties today, I swear. I'm gonna lose my mind. Let's see. Okay, so there I am, and there I am, and this is how I want you to go. Okay. Yay, maybe. Okay. 
Okay, guys. Somewhat straight, crooked, who knows. This should be able to straighten you. Okay. How about we call this good? What do we think? I can maybe zoom. All right. This is how we're going to do it. Huh? Okay, that works. That works, that works. I just need to know where I'm in frame so that... Okay. Okay, I've got so much stuff on my desk. I was... Um... Now you get to see my, my real life. If you could see me when I actually scrapbook, it's, it's a hot mess. Okay, put this over here. All right, friends. Sorry, so, so, so very sorry. Okay, this doesn't need to be here right now. Put that that way. Okay, so a couple of things. One of the things that I was doing um, right before I came on was I was, where's my, um, where's my little guy, my package for our paintbrush guy. What did I do with it? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I don't know what I did with it, but we have, in March, we have this cool little paintbrush die, and I've die cut this a few times, um, which this kind of just allows you to, if you don't have one of these things, I think that it, you get, I think it's called a weeder, and I think that you can get it with, I think it comes with a Cricut, but you can also get it like where you get like the mats and stuff at like Hobby Lobby or Michael's, the, um, all the Cricut and Silhouette stuff. You can get these little weeder things. And then I've got this other, I got one of these, which, I like this too, because like for small um, dies, rather than picking each individual piece out, you just run this like brush over the top of it. I'll show you like, I think. Okay, I've already cleared this one out, but um, okay. You know what, I'm getting ahead of myself, so I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so this is our brush die. And it is, oh gosh, about an inch and three quarters wide by uh, three and a quarter long for just the handle. And then it's got the little, br the little brush pieces and then the, um, the, metal part that goes across the top of the die. And then this little piece here is your paint, so to speak. So um, anyway, so th I think that this is super cool and I have some ideas on how to use it. So I have cut this out three times and I've, it's really, really, a cool, okay, how did I get, maybe that one didn't work. Then here's the little brush pieces. Oh, maybe I did it, four, I did it four times. See, I'm having out of body experiences today, people. And they aren't good. <laughs> all right, so here's all the pieces. So the paint part, here's the little metal piece. Um, here's some more of the little brushes. 
and it also comes with a little um, a little banner. I probably won't utilize that today, but you can you know stamp something on that if you wanted to. Here's the banner, the banner, the banner. And I am not sure if I need these other little pieces. I will play with it because honestly, I haven't even, I, this is the first time I've opened it. So anyway, um, there's gesso over here. There's all kinds of stuff on my, on my desk, which, okay. So I'm going to do something with this. I've got some ideas and I, um, one of the things that uh, coordinates with this die is our brush stroke um, our brush stroke uh, stamps. So you know if you want to have like a look of a brush stroke rather than you know using something like this um, we've got that we've got our brush stroke dies so uh, and they these can be used a million different ways so, We've got those. And then the other thing that I thought that we would play with today, let me see if I can have all of the things kind of on camera here. Um, I've got a couple of dies that I've cut with some of our older metal dies. I believe that this one was January of 2023 it was either january or december i can't remember but it's just a little it, it reminds me of um sequins actually so um you can use these um to uh as stencils so if you cut them out on either a heavy really heavy duty cardstock or if you cut them out on regular cardstock and you glue them together using liquid glue um, you can uh, use them as a stencil. So that's kind of a cool thing. The other thing too, um, if you don't want like the edge on them like this, you can cut them so that they're kind of a, an abstract shape. So I'll show you, I'll, I'll do that in a bit. The other one that I was gonna show you is our welded star texture die and this is a march die and it's super cute it's really really dainty and then that's the thing with like metal dies is that you can create you can get these like beautiful intricate shapes that you can't get with like a um like a, a cricket or a um, silhouette machine because they just can't get these sharp corners the way that a metal die can because it's you know virtually just a a blade but uh, this one I think might have kind of come apart here but uh, that's what it looks like and it's so pretty right it's great for adding texture, you know, like you can layer it over something. And I think that we'll do some like mixed media backgrounds and we'll kind of layer these like little dainty little dies, uh, die cut pieces over the top of the mixed media and it'll really um, pop. So I cut that out a few times and you can cut them apart. Like for instance, this one um, kind of got messed up because my um, die, my, plate moved because I was in a hurry and I didn't tape it down. Um, so my plate moved and it didn't cut the whole thing, but that's still okay because you just cut the pieces off and it looks, looks absolutely fine, right? Um, and then there's this one, which is entirely um, cut out. Now the other thing you can do is, um, like let's say you had a mixed media background that you weren't happy with and you could use it to cut a die like this 
and then save all these little baby stars and use them as fillers for your shaker pockets. Or you can um, add a little bit of like glossy accents or like Nouveau Crystal um, drops on top of them and it'll make them shiny and you can uh, use them almost like an enamel dot. So they're the perfect size for all those things. So that, pull these quickly apart. That's the hard part about sometimes when you have these tiny little dies. Sometimes, uh, and I've seen that there's some kind of a hack with press and seal. And um, actually, if I remember right, um, no, the press and seal thing is to hold all the pieces in place. So you put the, you put the, I'm, I'm going to have to look in. I, I've seen it and I can't remember, but I think that it holds all the like little pieces um, in place or in position. So let's say you want to color them or um, whatever, it holds them in place so that when it holds the whole, the whole like die in place, right? So you peel it off of your die, everything stays in place. You peel this piece off of the press and seal and all the little stars would stay in place. And so like, for instance, if you wanted to use mixed media and like color the stars different colors, and then you can lay this back um, over the top. I'm gonna have to look because whatever it was, it was super clever and I'm completely missing the point. So just, uh, I'm frazzled today, people. Um, so those are a few of the things that we're going to play with today. There are a couple of other things that I thought we would start with just for basic, um, just basic diet or mixed media information. So I'm gonna uh, move these over to the side, try and keep them in some sort of organized fashion so that I don't have to sort them again, but be easier said than done. All right, these, these go here. I'm gonna pull this off since I showed you that, and then these can go that direction. Okay, put the stars over here. You know, I'm going to quickly put my phone in just in case. I would hate for my battery to die. It seems to be not holding a charge these days. So there's that. Um, okay, so a couple of different things. I have taken a few sheets of cardstock and this is one of the pattern papers from the, the kit. And I think my cat walked across it. So there's cat hair on it. And then there's this one. Okay. So on this, good grief. Okay. On this, we've got white gesso, and this one has clear gesso. And then on this pattern paper here, I put white gesso. And I think I was talking about this before where people um, think that it's hard to use like a, a busy pattern paper um, as their layout. 
or as the background of their layout because it competes with everything else. So you can use white gesso on a busy pattern paper and you basically what you do is you paint it in the center and then you just use your fingers and kind of um, feather it outwards so it creates this haze. You can add mixed media on top of this um, or you can um, just use it as it is with the white background and then add your embellishments and so on and so forth. So like, for instance, if you were to take this paper, let me see, I've got one. Where, where do I have one? Um, what's the back of this? Okay. Hang on. Okay, so like for instance, this is the paper itself, the way that it comes. If you take some floral die cuts like this, these are from our uh, March embellishment kit, and you lay it over the top of a busy pattern paper, you can't see them because they completely get lost, as does anything else you put on it, right? So all of your die cuts and your projects this is just I mean you can use it as a background but you know it's it's probably not gonna give you the appearance that you want when your page is done like you love all the things but how do you use them right so um you can use this as a border and put you know white cardstock or something that's more um a, a more subtle pa pattern in the center so you have kind of a canvas to work with. If you add gesso to your paper and then you bring in some die cuts or you know your photo or whatever, it shows up because you've got this little um, kind of cloudy background where and you can, you know, once you do this, once you get your uh, gesso on it and you start laying things out, if you feel like you need more, you can you can add more. And so like this is just, it's a cheap white acrylic gesso. And it's from, I think that's one I got from Hobby Lobby. And, it, it was cheap, it's a giant thing, and so like for instance, um, you can use a brush. I've got these little Nouveau, they're like silicone. So like if I wanted this to go out a little further, you know, I can add a little bit more gesso and kind of just rub it out with my fingers. Now, when I did this initially, the, your paper, when you add mixed media to it, it warps, it just does. And, um, but after it dried, I just put it under like a, a box or a heavy book. Um, and it completely, it, it, it's not 100% flat, but it's flat enough. So with this, you still get like some of the, the pattern that you want on your page or on the like outskirts of your page, but you kind of get to keep this like little um, subtle, subtle pattern in the center. So you just kind of blend this out and you don't want to be too heavy handed because if you do, you're gonna rub the surface of your paper off. So, you know, just, and like if you want the center part kind of heavier, you can do that too. And you just, if you use your finger, it kind of smooths it out and you don't get the, the brush lines like you do when you use like a, a brush or um, like this, for instance, if I were just to come in and do that, I would have some brush lines. And 
This is nice too if you're gonna add something on top of this, which I think we will. Um, we'll let this dry for a second. But you see how this kind of works, right? I'm gonna increase the... the haze, the cloudiness around the edges. So it gives me kind of more real estate to put my, my die cuts. And we can add some color to the center. Um, but it kind of, you see what I'm saying in terms of how this takes a busy, paper and makes it more usable. And it is usable just the way this is, right? Um, but when you add mixed media over the top of it, and because you've added gesso, it's gonna protect it from the moisture um, of any mixed media that you use. So you can add water to it and um, you'll see the difference. I'll, I'll kind of show you the difference between what happens when you use um, gesso on your paper prior to um, adding mixed media. I thought my daughter brought me some. Oh. Okay, so that is white gesso. And so it leaves a haze and you can't... It, um, so if you want to be able to see the pattern underneath, you want to use a clear gesso, which is what I did here. And then my cat walked on it. So I don't know if I can, you know, it just is what it is. Okay, so this is clear gesso and it left the, um, the pattern. So this paper is completely protected. So you can add mixed media to the center of this and um, it's easy to kind of move the color around. So we'll um, do something with that as well. Um, and this one, I have to look at them because I did white on one and clear on the other. And generally this one, I believe is the white. And the reason why I'm saying that is that there are a couple of products that behave differently with different gessos, or a specific product that behaves differently. And I, gosh. Okay, so this one's the white, and this one, no. This one's the white. This one's the clear. Well, you know what? This will be a perfect example of showing you what it looks like uh, if you use the wrong one. Um, so, and then let's get a piece of cardstock that has nothing on it. This is just plain white cardstock believe that this is American. Oh, nope, this is glittery. All right. Now, let's see if I have. That's canvas. This one. Oh, there we go. This is a heavy, I think that this this is marshmallow cardstock, and it's a heavy, um, smooth white cardstock from American Crafts, and it's great for mixed media. Um, so it works much better than the textured cardstock because it holds up to, um, takes more of a beating, let's say. Um, okay, so let's start with a couple of things. And in fact, um, I'm gonna cut these 
I'm gonna cut these up. So let's just cut them into five inch strips. So this one is, no, just so. This one, is um this one is i'm not sure I have to look at it usually when you put a white gesso on white cardstock it has a little bit of a yellow maybe i did white on both of these i can't remember which Okay, this is gesso. And then this one is gesso. Oops. Okay. And this out of the way. So. of different things and this will um and i've got a paintbrush hang on i've got to grab a cup of water to rinse my brushes I know. Don't laugh at me, Meg. Okay. So, let's open up the stamps. Quick little um, message about the stamps in terms of getting good coverage and a good image when you use them because they've got well, there's so they're kind of sticky and there's a little bit of an oily um, kind of a finish on them so when you stamp them into your ink the ink kind of puddles on top but if you take an eraser and rub it across. You can use this too, like you can do fabric, but an eraser works really well because it, if you notice, like the sheen from the stamp is now gone. And this isn't the part that you need to be sticky. The part that you need to be sticky is on the other side. So run the edge and I find if you do like the the a flat eraser like this and you just run it along rather than using the tip of it you get less like debris left I guess but I use this technique to season all of my stamps before I use them and it changes the appearance or the the um the image that you get. And then I'm just going to take some water, spray it over the top, and then I'm just going to use a paper towel, I guess, and try and Remove all of the, I'm gonna try and not get water everywhere, but you don't want all the like little eraser 
racer lint. I don't know. What do you call it? Debris, I guess is probably a better word. But you see you've got, if you run it under like, run it under water, it'll get rid of all that. But I'm not, I'm not doing that today. Okay. That's good enough, I guess. Kind of wipe this up. Okay, so no gesso and gesso, but we're not sure which colors and which kind. So let's just take one of these stamps and I need a clear wall. Oh, this is gonna fit. Ah, fits perfectly, right? Yay. Okay. So there's that. To open this. Okay. I'm trying to just clear this up of all of the goo that's left over. Okay. So I'm gonna take a Let's just take this 16 candles, Catherine Puller ink. And just so happens, it happens to be one that I haven't opened yet. I've got the mini somewhere, but we'll use the full, the full size. Okay, so we're just gonna add some ink to it. Make sure it's nice and inked up. And this is no gesso, right? So, and I have these, I have these, like, I use these on my Misty, but I find that they work great also on larger stamp blocks because you can just rub it over the top of it. You make sure that you get a clear impression, okay? So there's that one. Clean this off. Actually, we're gonna do it across the board. So that one's no gesso. This one has gesso, and this is gonna show you what gesso does. So this prevent, gesso prevents whatever medium you're using from soaking into the paper. So it stays on top, which allows you to mix and blend your mediums. Okay, so there's that one. And this is textured cardstock. The no gesso we did on smooth, so. Um, cat hair, you know, those of us with pets. How many of you have pets that hang out with you in your craft room? My pet is always in here, except when I do this. Okay, so here's another one. And what I'm gonna do, I think, is I'm gonna clean this stamp. And we'll do another color here. We'll go, let's say, do pink. This is Be Mine. It's another Catherine Puller ink. And the reason I, lo I love Catherine Puller inks is because they react with water, which is similar to um, like the Tim Holtz. Um, distress oxide, but I feel like they stamp a little better. So I used this and the ends of this stamp are different on each, on each side. So this time I'm going to flip it this direction so that the end isn't exactly the same. 
and I'm overlapping it just a bit. Okay, so there's the second one. And you can combine all the stamps that are in this, uh, in this set and do the, the same, um, the same technique, but for time's sake, I'm just going to use this, this one. So we'll run this this way. And what's going to happen with these, um, oh, and since this is a mixed media, stamp it doesn't have to be perfect so I'm going to go over the top of this one again kind of line it up a little bit but it doesn't really matter I just need to I want to fill in that center part so this way okay see it doesn't look that different right and here's the other one. Yeah. Okay. Now we'll clean this one and we'll add some orange. This is Bellini and I'm gonna wipe this off. I also have a stamp chamois which is really nice. I'm not using it today because I didn't get it wet but um, you've seen those like you get these in the auto department at Target and they're like chamois to dry cars and like windshields and things like that. And they're a, some type of a material that is absorbent for one thing, but it leaves no lint. So like if you use a baby wipe or um, paper towels, you end up leaving lint and debris on your stamp sometimes which shows up when you, you know, when you stamp with them. And so um, using one of these, they call them, you can buy them on um, scrapbook.com or Simon Says Stamp, and you can buy them as a stamp chamois and you'll pay a lot more. Or go on Amazon and in the automotive section, you can uh, just, I think they're like microfiber chamois or something like that, and you can get them for cheap. So here's the orange. This one is called Bellini. And it was in a previous color kit. I can't remember which month it was, but, um, it's a really pretty orange. Okay. You know what, let's just do two gessos because honestly with the ink, the clear and the white, they're gonna work the same. The only um, product that is a little bit different um, when it comes to clear and white gesso is Lindy Stamp Gang Magical Powders. And in addition to that, even with clear gesso, I found that there's only one clear gesso that works exceptionally well with the Lindy's powders. Um, and, or actually, the clear gesso works fine. I think that the white gesso the um, Finnebear White Gesso works with the uh, with the Lindy's powders, and the clear gessos work okay. The other thing that works okay is, uh, or that works really well with them, is uh, gel medium, 
and it's like a clear, it, you can buy it in matte, in gloss, in, in satin, and it just creates like a, a protective, it adds a protective layer. And so it's completely translucent and the uh, Lindy's products work really well with that. So let's do a yellow. We're just gonna kind of create a, a little rainbow. Let's get rid of this guy. We don't need him. And you can honestly do this with, um, let's flip this. Um, you can do it with your ink pads too by just like swishing your ink pad across your paper, but I'm gonna do it like this instead. Okay, so yellow and, but do you see how here, you'll notice that they blend a little bit better and the colors start kind of running together a little bit and without doing anything to them. So that is because the, the um, ink itself is staying on the surface of the paper without soaking into it. Okay, so there's the yellow and a let's do a green. We're gonna do lime murky, and I think that this one's pretty bright. But I'm kind of doing these in somewhat of rainbow order. Let's see. So here is a green. This one's called Lime Ricky. I think that this one is from my stash. I don't think we've done this one. We've done Garden Party in the past, which is similar to this one. Um, it's not quite as bright, I don't think. Okay. There's that. See how pretty this is? And these are kind of the colors that you'll see throughout our March kits. Um, do this one, flip it. Are you getting my head in there? If you are, I'm sorry. Um, okay, turn this one off. I think that this water bottle, I may have gotten at Ikea, and I like it because it just adds a very, very fine mist, um, which, is, which is really nice. Okay, so let's do blue. it's difficult. Okay. So, and I always find it easier to stamp, ink up my larger stamps by putting them on, um, on the back or laying the stamp block down and then adding the ink on top of it. This one. And one more. And flip this one this way. Okay. Okay. And there we go. off the stamp. Okay. 
So now that we've done this, the difference when we um, play with this, make sure that my brush is clean. Okay, so when you add water to these, let's just add some water, just a little bit. And you'll notice that by adding water, because the ink just stays on the surface, it starts blending and bleeding. And so you get, if you do this right, and you control some of this water, because obviously you don't want the purple or the orange coming down into the green. But here we'll add some water and allow the blue to kind of come down. But see how, run it this way. You can run it this way. But do you see how pretty that is? And the colors just blend together. Now, if we do the same thing on the paper that doesn't have any gesso, you won't get that same blending. You'll get a little bit, but the paper that, do you see? And this, you can move the pigment around. This, you can't. But the one thing that you can do, if it's um, if the ink is applied, the Catherine Pooler in particular, if the ink is applied directly to the paper without any gesso, the ink comes up. And you get like these white dots, right? So it's a different effect, but, and this, I think if you can kind of. Okay, so that's using the stamp with um, just regular ink, cardstock with no gesso, cardstock with gesso, and then adding water. And then look what happens if you were to add this, like as this texture dye over the top of it. See how cool that looks? In fact, if I bring it up to the camera, you get to see it a little better. So it's really, really pretty. And I think that I wonder if on my camera, if I can, I don't know if I can adjust the brightness. Because I feel like maybe I'm going to try to turn that light off. Mm, nope. I've got some. Okay, well, we're going to leave it as it is. Okay, so, or if you put it over the watercolored one too, it's it would be really pretty. So we're just gonna set these aside and let them dry for a few minutes while we do some other things. Now, the other way that you can use, um, Okay, this one is, where are we? Pencil, pencil. This one's no gesso. And then this one has gesso. Okay, so 
if we were to take and use, put the inks away for now. And let's try using maybe, um, let's try using, these are shimmers and they have been in previous color kits. and Jenny B. Blue. Okay, so we're gonna use these three. They say with the shimmers, you're supposed to mix them like this. So I'll do what they suggest. Because I think if you shake them, um, Sometimes you get problems with the mica clogging the um, straw that's in the bottle and the nozzles will get clogged. Okay, so I'm gonna scoot these over this way a little bit. Put these here and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to squirt some of this on my glass mat and I'm gonna try and pick some of it up with my stamp. Let it kind of maybe put a little water on my stamp. And then this one is no gesso, right? So I'm going to, so that one is with water this one, we'll do it without. The fun thing about shimmers is that they have like a really pretty um, kind of an opalescent shimmer to them. So kind of run this around. Now this one is without any water but using a stamp. And so since these are like, um, like a mix, kind of a faux mixed media stamp, um, you can easily use them with um, sprays. Okay, so now we'll do the same. We'll put some Jenny B Blue down. This is without water and that didn't get that in very well. I'll put some more. Okay. But you see how this is soaking right into the paper? When I do this on the gesso paper, you're gonna see the difference. And this one is called Pretty in Pink. And this is a coloring, so this one doesn't have any shimmer to it. This is just flat. Okay. And lay this one down. Okay, so they're super pretty, but if you try, to, they'll blend a little bit since they're still wet, but you can't really move a lot of the pigment around because it's all soaked in. You can move, your what you're moving around is the water that's on top, so you're gonna, you'll keep that shape. It'll move around just a little bit, but you don't get that really pretty like rainbow blending that you would get when you use a um, 
when you use it on gesso. So let's use it on the gesso side and then we'll compare the two. So this first one, since I overlapped a little bit, okay, let's take this and we'll stamp it using the gesso. And you see how that kind of stays on top? Do it again. Okay. Then, we'll do the, uh, why don't we do the yellow this time? Add a little bit more, just so that we get good coverage. overlap it slightly but you're gonna see a big difference in the way that this this works because oftentimes you think oh well with stamp I don't have many ink pads with uh, stamps I need ink pads and so I'm not gonna get the stamps because you know I don't have enough colors to make them work right and uh, I think with this you're gonna see that that's not necessarily the case right so here, and we'll lay this down. Okay, now let's add a little bit of water to this and you'll see that by adding the water, you're able to get these really pretty, this really pretty like color blending that happens. Right? So you have a lot more. And if you, that, the one thing to think about too, so for instance, if you wanted the red and the yellow to kind of mix separately from the yellow and the green, take it, put your red and yellow on, blend it. You can dry it, you can dry it, air dry it or dry it with a heat gun. But once it's dry, then you can add a little more yellow and then add your blue in and blend the yellow and the blue and you'll get the green um, kind of, you'll get that mixed tone of green because if you'll notice here, you're getting some muddy, um, muddiness in between when the red and the yellow and the blue mix because um, green and red don't like one another. Well, they do, but they don't like to mix because they're opposite colors on the color wheel. Okay, but you can use your paper towel and kind of soak up some of that muddiness, right? And then if you wanna soften up this edge on top, you can do that easily with just a simple paintbrush and that color will move. So, you know, you've got a lot of different ways to use that. But if you look at it, you've got a very different, you get two very different effects. So if you add your gesso, you're gonna have a lot more um, movement. The other thing too, so like for instance, if you wanted to add more, let's say we wanted to add more blue, you can, use, you can do that with your paintbrush, right? I wish I had like a round paintbrush over here, but I don't, so. And for me to find it, along with my technical difficulties today, we're not gonna mess with that. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water. Add some water to the paper. Allow it to blend around a little bit. And we're gonna do the same with the yellow. But I think we're gonna add the yellow up 
here more. So the yellow and the red and the pink can mix better. And then just throw some water and allow it to blend on its own. You kind of just have to let the paint and the water do all the work for you. If you start trying to do too much with your brush, you're just gonna create a muddy mess. The other thing too is I have somewhere, oh, I have a little, this is probably not as big of a brush as I would like, but if you add a bunch of water, you can just hold your brush and hit it on the top and you can create splatters, right? Oh my gosh, I about stuck my paintbrush in my coffee. And you know I'm so desperate, I probably would have drank it anyway. Do the yellow, create some yellow splatters, maybe. I think we need some more water over here. And then we'll do the pink. And we'll let this one dry. I'm gonna kind of mop up a little bit of this extra water here. And we'll just let it dry and see what it looks like when it's done. Um, now, let me clean up my mat. If you don't have a glass mat, they're great. This one that I have actually has magnet, um, it has metal in it, so it's magnetic. So if I want to put something down on it or hold paper in place and put like heavy duty magnets down to hold it, it does that. So I, I can't remember the brand. I'll see if I can find it. I know I got it on Amazon and I can't remember, um, can't remember who, who made it. So I'll see if I can find it and I'll add it to the comments in the video here. Um, okay. So what I was um, thinking with this is, okay, let's say you did this on a 12 by 12 layout, right? And if this had gesso on it, you could have these running down this way and then spray it with water and just have the drips kind of running down your, pa running down your page. I think, I think you're living over there. Um, anyway, have the pa hold the paper this way, have the, uh, the pigment run down a 12 by 12 sheet. If you had at the top these little paint brushes, and if they're not overlapping like this so much, but if, you know, you plan it out a little better than this, obviously, but you have your paint brushes at the top and then you put your uh, brush here and with your brush what did I do I did oh boy so think rather than going directly on. I'll just kind of do it this way. Because if I, I feel like if I lay this directly onto the stamp pad, 
honestly, I think it could be kind of cool if you kind of did it like this and just, right? So you've got this here and then maybe does this guy And then this guy with the paint. Am I even, I'm probably not, I'm not even on screen. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, you guys. Just realized that. Let me move this up. But, you know, have this, have this. And this, I have to, and then this over the top. And then if you took this and you put uh, embossing ink over the top of it, so whatever cl embossing, clear embossing ink you've got, and then sprinkle it with um, silver embossing powder, it would look metallic, so when you put this over the top of your, and I think you would do it with that, and with these little guys. And it would have the little um, metallic um, top of the, of the paintbrush, right? And then um, you could use like a, uh, if you had like a wood, I have a wood grain stamp somewhere that you could use with like a, a you could use it with a, uh, like a distress ink, or you could use it even if you just wanted to keep this tone on tone and use the same ink pad with a wood grain um, pattern stamp, you could create this page that just looks like it's got, you've painted rainbows down it, and then you know, you can run your, your uh, add your picture. So in essence, you've created your own, um, your own background. So you could do it this way and you could have like, you know, your photos kind of lined up either vertically or horizontally and just build your page that way. So that, I'm gonna let these dry a little bit and then we'll, um, if I'm not, I'm, I'm sure I'm running way over. So um, I'll assemble one of these paint brushes and post it in our Facebook group so you can see what the um, finished assembled paintbrush looks like when it's all said and done. Okay, so I've now created a big mess. So the other thing that wanted to talk about was adding color to a pattern paper like this, right? And what I'm going to do to kind of hold this in place, I have this, like, because I, I do have, um, magnets to hold this, but this is, actually I'm gonna move this so that I'm completely in screen. On frame, I guess is the word. Okay, I'm gonna lay that there, put this here. This is like post-it tape and it works perfectly. It's sticky enough but it doesn't damage your paper when you pull it off. So it'll hold this in place while we do all of our stuff to it, okay? So 
Let's try, we're gonna mix a bunch of different things together to do this. Okay, so we are, let's try. Um, what color do you think? I'm thinking we wanna do a pink and let's do it. maybe I think the blue could be pretty and I've got a be a little too this one okay okay so this one is called sweetheart and I am going to start by just spritzing a little bit of water and then I'm gonna Slightly add a little color to the center. And maybe we'll add a little of this yellow down here. That might be a little more than I want. And th with the gesso, that's totally fine. Like if you find, you're like, oh God, that's not what I wanted to do. Just take your paper towel and it pretty much, it'll leave a little tinge of color, but you can start over for the most part, right? So that's another thing that, um, okay, so let's say now we wanted to do blue, right? So here, we'll do And then we can add a little bit of, let's add some yellow. And where's my, go through the paper towels here. Okay, so we're just gonna, I want to add a little bit more of the blue here. But let's say, oh, hmm, nope, I liked the pink better. Use your paper towel, blot it all up, and go back to the pink. And you can mix the different pinks, right? So, or let's say, let's start with, Some Catherine Puller ink. Let's just put a little pink there. We're gonna add some water to it and let it bleed. Okay. And I was kind of thinking that I needed to hold this down because I didn't want it to warp too much, but I want to be able to add some color. So here, and then let's say we want maybe this a different pink. That was It's a Girl. And we'll add a little bit of water and think that that's from my paintbrush or from my cat. My hands are so dirty. Okay. Well, let's add a little bit of shimmers and just let all of the different colors 
blend. I'm thinking I want it to go a little more this way. And even though you have gesso, you don't want to add too, too much water. But you can add water with your brush to kind of help, help it blend. Okay, now let's add a little bit of Now I'm going to show you what I mean when you decide that you want it. Let's dry this with my heat gun to set the color because the shimmers colors are all like buildable. I know this is Literally, like watching paint dry. The other thing too, is you can use your paint gun, or your heat gun, your heat tool. I'm gonna kind of try and soak up some of the puddles, but sometimes you can use it and move the color around a little bit. But ultimately, if you dry your paint or ink or what have you, and then you add more color over the top, the color is buildable. So, and if you dry it top and bottom, it reduces the warping. Don't ask me why that is, but. This thing is making me crazy. Yeah, okay. Okay, dry enough. So, this is dry. Now let's say we wanna add some more color to it in something that's maybe a little brighter. These are Shimmer's Creamies and they are a um, paint pot they're like um, kind of like a cake watercolor you add water to it and let it sit for a second um, and allow the water to kind of loosen some of that pigment up so let's do that and then maybe we'll do Do a little of this um, aqua hue from. Gosh, I've got an ink pad over here. Got a lid on it. I'm just asking for a disaster. Okay. So. yellow. This one's called Daffodil. 
and maybe this is an inklings and this one is shimmery okay let's see let's use another find a round brush of some sort. You would think that with all the many brushes that I have, I would have a round brush, but they're all flat. Okay, well, we're gonna use this water brush. That'll work good enough, I think. Okay, so. Add a little more. And this has a little bit of that this one has some shimmer to it, is it? Nope, this one doesn't. But it's gonna kind of give some variation in color. Okay. So we're just adding this pop of color in the center. And the thing is that you have to remember when you're scrapbooking on mixed media, it looks like a hot mess until you put all the things on it, right? Because ninety percent of what you're putting down here is gonna be covered up. But you just want to have that pop of color coming out from underneath. And we're just picking up the colors that are in the paper itself. But you're kind of creating this solid, almost like a solid paper in the center where to anchor all of your stuff, it's giving it you kind of a canvas to use on a busy piece of paper, basically. So add a little more. blend, let it move. I know that this is, let me see if I can, this is, nope, that made it worse, didn't it? Okay, let's try that. Did that help? Oh, good grief. Oh, there we go. Okay. Fixed it, I think. Ah, now you can see the mess, but that's okay. You, you guys are getting to know the real me. What you see on my desk is what happens in my brain. Okay. Add a little bit more water. But if you see by doing this, you're not moving the entire bit of mixed media that you'd already done. The other is kind of set in, in place, right? So you're creating another layer, if you will. Um, now let's add just a little bit of this pink here. I'm just adding the color to all the wet here and then I'm going to allow the the water to kind of I know I'm holding this off camera why
Okay. And let's move it, move it. Okay. Now towards the bottom, we're going to add the yellow. I want to clean this up right here because... asking for trouble if I don't. Okay. So now let's add some yellow and I'm going to use a paper towel and pick up some of this water down towards the bottom here. some of the water up. But do you see how nicely that pink kind of coordinates with the pink in the flowers? Now we need to add um, a pop of yellow. And when it mixes with the pink, we'll get some orange. Okay. Now this has shimmer to it. And I'm going to We're going to get some orange in here in the middle. I want to wet this over here a little bit so that we can get some of that yellow. this direction. Sorry, the way that this is kind of, and I know that this looks like a hot mess. Trust me, I know. But when you see, okay, so let's add, um, my brush. I'm gonna mix this one. This has a little less gold in it. blend around. Want this to go that direction and then this direction. Add a little water, but you kind of want to keep it where the gesso is because if you get a drip, a drip that's outside where the gesso is, like right here, there's nothing that can be done about that. Which is fine, but. Okay. So I'm gonna kind of soak up just a little bit of the water and then let it blend again. Some pink. 
Now, I'm not going to be able to finish this on camera, but I will mess with it today and I will post um, the fin a finished project with this background in our Facebook group. So head over there and join so you can you can check it out, okay? Because you'll want to see it. Because at this point, I'm sure that you're all going, oh my God, I'm never doing this. The other thing um, that you can do that's a little quicker than this is to use what's called the packaging technique. And there's so many um, videos that are out there. In fact, if you go back onto our YouTube channel for many, many um, years ago, Missy Widden was on our design team for six years, I think. And um, there are lots of projects that she did with our kits and she used the packaging technique a lot. And um, in fact, I think she may have been the, um, not the inventor of it, but um, she definitely educated people on how to use it. Okay, so now we've got this background, right? And I'm not, it's all wet, so I'm not gonna lay anything on top of it, but do you see how it gives you a place to be able to put your things down? So I'm gonna do a page, I'll finish a page um, using this. And the other thing too, obviously, you know, the stars might not be the exact right fit, but who knows, maybe they will be, just to add some texture underneath this. Um, and I'm not gonna make you sit through watching me dry this either. Um, oh, so let's go back through. This was the gesso um, using the mists. And so see how that, uh, how that printed or how that blended. And in fact, so I've got this piece right here. Um, you could use, um, you could use this and you could use the paintbrush die and just run all the dyes through something like this. So if you have a bunch of like backgrounds that you're like, oh, I'm not gonna use that. You know, it's not this or it's not that hang on to them, you can use them and run them through with your metal dies. And I think you'll be um, amazed at the transformation when you do something like that. So like, for instance, if th this, these colors were to come out in this shape, imagine how pretty that would be. So I'll, I'll do that. I can't do that until this completely dries. This is the one with no gesso. Do the same thing. Um, the other dyes that we have, we've got this really cool set of um, floral dyes. So that would be really cool if you use something like this and you ran the floral dyes through it and assembled them. So let me, I'm gonna kind of take all these backgrounds that I messed with today and um, I'll play with our dyes with them too. And then this one too, our um, Viewmaster film, I guess. So uh, we've got a cut file that is coordinating with this. So uh, that should be out this week. Um, so yeah. Does anybody have any questions about any of this mess that I've created today? Aside from eek. <laughs> I'm gonna just kind of 
mop up a little bit of the excess. No, no comments. I don't see any comments on my laptop. Um, and I think if I flip this, whoopsie, am I going the wrong way? Okay, here, in the right way. Okay, voila, friends. Forgive my technical difficulties. Okay, here. Okay. In the right way. Okay. <sighs> La -la, friends. Let's see. Mm. Forgive my technical Yeah, we're almost at two hours, aren't we? Okay, here. That wasn't my In right intention, okay. but we did a lot of stuffs. Friends. So, um, let's see. So, uh, if, if you haven't joined our Facebook group, please go over and do that. Um, you can, I'll leave a, a link to it in the description box below. I need to update that with the link to our Facebook group. But uh, once you do that, I'll post a bunch of pictures from our live of, of uh, photos of, of what we did and what kind of the end result but, uh, ended up looking like. So um, make that, sure you, you head over there. And then also too, of, uh, um, photos of, of what we did. Leave a like, what subscribe and hit the, the notification result, bell so that like. you so, know every time we upload a new video. Too, the other thing too uh, is, um, like. Yeah, but so do those, those, those things, those things. So and you know, um, one more thing, um, uh, head over to our website if you have any questions videos. or um, is, um, want more details about our kits yeah. or our so dyes do or whatever, things, head over to our website and, at www.hipclub.net um, and all of the details about all of our March kits and the previous kits and everything like that. Um, is listed on our website. The other thing too, a um, couple things about uh, subscribing is that, or are that, um, you receive your main kit automatically each month at a discount price. Um, to purchase individual kits, the purchase price is $34.95. If you're a subscriber, you receive it for $29.95. Um, also, you receive 15% off on all of your add-on kit purchases. And that means like color kits, um, pattern paper add-on kits, um, um, cardstock also, kits, dyes, you color kits, you name it, stamps, pocket life kit, pocket, pocket life stamp set. Like we have so kits, many kits that we put out every um, single month. So, um, you have a lot of, a lot to choose from. Kit, and dyes, when you take 15% off of like, kit, 20 like, bucks, so for instance, that's $3. So, you know, that's kind of substantial. If you order more than a couple of kits, I know a lot of um, websites uh, offer free shipping at like a hundred dollars. Well, I think that if you were to um, order all of the kits and um, your discount would be greater than like what $100. the well, shipping you know, cost would be. So, um, order and you're probably kits, right at around a hundred bucks with, um, with everything, maybe a little bit more, would be but with all of your discounts and everything. So that, that's something to keep in mind. The other thing too is that um, we put out uh, with everything. Maybe a cup files but, every month with all and, and everything. our subscribers uh, receive access to all of our cup files that, each month. Um, generally there's about six, six to eight of them. 
Uh, we so you can download those for free. We also per, uh, offer them. Um, there, you can be if you're not a subscriber and you are interested in our cup files. I think you can purchase them for two dollars a piece. So if you think about that um, in the grand scheme of things, and you want to. Uh, and you, you know, if you were to purchase just files, the eight cup files, they're sixteen dollars. So, so you're getting sixteen dollars um, with your subscription if you utilize our cup files, um, which is a great deal. Um, the other thing too, if you aren't a subscriber and you're kind of on the fence about it, we also do uh, a one freebie cup file a month that is available to anyone. You just have to register on our website. So once you do that, you can um, access our free cup files. Um, and like I said, there's one Available new one every anyone. single month. You just have to um, register on our website. And I think so once you do that, that that's and, everything. Um, access our free cup files. Um, so uh, before I sign off, new one every single month. leave a comment um, below and if you like you this format so of uh, video and just kind of playing so, with different products and showing you how they can be used or if you would prefer a completed project, or if there's something in particular that you would like to learn about or have me show you how to how to use it or, you know, different techniques or whatever, leave a comment below and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do it. So I'm just thankful that you joined me. And I hope that you're inspired to make something pretty today, you know? Below, Treat yourself I'm, I'm to a little uh, to creative therapy. Like to, just good for the soul. So with that said, I'm going to sign off for this week, and I will see you next week on our next Sunday Funday Live. Bye. Creative therapy. Just good for the soul. And here I go, trying to figure out how to turn this off. And I will see you next week on our next Sunday Funday Live.